the second matter, and that's in Division 22. The second matter is a violation of condition, condition of pretrial release on a grand theft. It's in Division 22 as well. The bond on that case set by Judge LeBlanc is 2,500. So the combination of those two appear to be, now, at that point, 4,500. The next matter, a warrant arrest affidavit in Division 22. And that's failure to appear for a case management conference. It's actually a capius that tells me that an information has been filed in that case on a grand theft. Case management conference failure uh, on the 22nd of May, bond set at 2,500. So it looks like to me then the three cases together. Can I say something? All right, let's see. Uh, 2018 CF 17926 and 2019 CF 193. You are correct. There are two of these, um, and there should just be one. And so I do rule at this time that uh, only one of these is in effect. So the total bond for the two charges come to 4,500. There's a third warrant, which is a capius, and it's for grand theft third degree case number. 2019 CF 192, fair to appear for trial management conference on April the 25th. It's no bond to you see the judge in division 12. So 2,000, 2,500 and no bond at the present time. I, are, are you uh, represented by a private attorney? Your Honor, I have three attorneys. Okay. And, and they are public defenders? Yes, sir. Okay. I will note here that, that uh, Stephen, Stephen or Stephen Cameron is represented by the public defender on all three of these charges. His, it indicates he was brought here from uh, Lee County, yes, Fort sir, Myers. North, North Carolina. Uh, and or I think it's Cape Coral is a larger city than Fort Myers now. No, no, no. Um, no, 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 sir. Lee County of North Carolina. Yeah, of That's North where, Carolina. I'm not from here, Your okay. Honor. It, uh, yes, Lee County Jail, North Carolina. Yes, sir. So you'll need to stay in touch with your public defender on each of those cases to see what can be done if you are seeking to obtain your release. This is uh, Ryan Mark Fellman. Bonded, John. Thank you. Tracy Gideon. There are three charges from yesterday at 4100 South Orange Boston Trail. Count one is possession of cocaine. It's a felony charge having a bond of $1,000. Count two, trespassing, $100. Count three, possession of drug paraphernalia. Those are both first degree misdemeanors and have a bond of $100 each for a total of $1,200. I appoint the public defender to represent you in division 19. I order that while the case is, while these three charges are pending, 
You're not to return to within 500 feet of the intersection of 41st and South Orange Blossom Trail. Stay in touch with your attorney so that you know when your next hearing is scheduled for. Majana. This is a charge of aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. It is from 4718 Moreland Street from yesterday. The public defender is appointed to represent you in Division 19. The bond in this case is set at $3,500. On the arrest affidavit itself, it said no bond, but that has been corrected by uh, Orange County Corrections Department. Stay in touch with your attorney concerning this case. You can now bond out, but I do order that you have no contact with anyone that is named as a victim or a witness and you're not to go to the, the area of 4718 Moreland Street while the case is pending. Um, We'd also ask for no weapons and firearms. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise this question to see, to see what the situation is. It appears that it is his residence address. Yes, and it also appears that Sandra L. Jones listed as witness one in the report is his roommate and the his address being I believe 4722 no no I'm sorry 4718 is his address 4722 is the address of his neighbor and the alleged victim um, no objection to the one time return with law enforcement if law enforcement can verify that the victim does not live there then he's welcome to return to the residence according to the police report the victim does not live there I understand, but if the victim is there, he can't. The, at that point, there are other procedures he would have to do to get the victim out of the house. Um, I, I believe the following is, is what I am required to do as first appearance judge. I am required to order you to have no contact with any of those persons. Therefore, it is your obligation to work with your attorney to figure out what is the practical solution to that problem that arises when that happens. I'm not ordering who lives where because often it depends upon who pays the rent or those kind of situations. Um, so I simply order you to have no contact. So your obligation is to make sure you do not have contact and work with your attorney and allow your attorney to work with the court to try to resolve any practical problems. As we're not trying to make anyone homeless, but on every case, you cannot have any contact with a person named as a victim or a witness. We'd also ask for no weapons and firearms, Your Honor. No weapons, including a firearm. Okay. All the cases is pending. Your Honor, Chastity McConnell is medical. All right. I'll reschedule Chastity, Chastity McConnell for tomorrow. And I note that thus far, that person has not requested uh, an attorney yet. So I believe what I will do out of an abundance of caution is I will appoint the public defender to represent Chastity McConnell to see that this person is able to get a first appearance whenever the person is physically able to do so. It's Division 11. Tanya Moore. Yes, sir. This is a first appearance for you. The charge is from yesterday. 
count one possession of cocaine. The bond is $1,000 as a felony charge. And count two, possession of drug paraphernalia. It's a misdemeanor, first degree misdemeanor. It comes to me as a $500 bond, but the correct bond is $100. Your total bond is $1,100 in Division 20. I've appointed the public defender to represent you in Division 20. And I order that you not return to the intersection within 500 feet of the intersection of Woods and Cayley. Mm -hmm. So I, my memory is that that's, that intersection is one block west of Cayley. Um, so you're not, you're not to go in that area. I don't believe you live in that area. So while the case is pending, stay away from that. Hector Ortiz Rivera is mental health. All right. Hector Luis Rivera has two cases. They'll be reset for tomorrow to see if he can be seen. Uh, possession of Xanax and petty theft. Reset. This is Tabitha Pettis. Yes, sir. There are four charges on this arrest affidavit. It's from 17417 Caudell Road from June the 8th. Count one is possession of cocaine. Bond is $1,000. Count two is possession of heroin, bond 150. Count three is a bond of 150, a possession charge, and a misdemeanor charge is count four, possession of drug paraphernalia, $100 bond. Total bond, $1,400, division 22. The public defender is appointed to represent you, and I order that you not go to the area of 17417 Caudell Road while the case is pending. No contact with anyone that's named in this uh, narrative of the charging affidavit as being a victim or witness in the case. Your Honor? Yes. May we, um, may we ask for whether or not we can get a ROR it does appear as if she has no criminal record. Um, she has no out-of-state convictions or Florida convictions. Um, here, here is what I um, have, and I'll um, see what the response is. It shows a, a, a misdemeanor conviction for petty theft, and the other are arrests, no out-of-state known. Does that... Does that Correct, Your Honor. Oh, my mistake. And what is the state's position concerning a object. request for ROR? We would object to an ROR, Your Honor. In, in, in viewing the allegations before the court and viewing the history, I find that the bonds that are listed are appropriate, and uh, I, I believe that Ms. Pettis will have to uh, post a bond that totals uh, 1000 $400 for those four charges. Two felonies, two misdemeanors. I'm sorry, three felonies and one misdemeanor. Richie Pittman.
I am appointing the public defender to represent Richie Anthony Pittman in Division 10 on an arrest affidavit charging aggravated battery. It is from yesterday at 1823 Americana Boulevard. The bond is set at $3,500. The case is complicated by the fact that he was out on bond on the charges of domestic violence battery and possession of cannabis in Division 50. On that prior case, 2019 MM4542, I revoked the bond and the ROR, and I order that he be held without bond in that case until he sees the judge assigned to that case. It's in Division 50, which is the Domestic Violence Misdemeanor County Court Division. He has a second arrest affidavit. And that second arrest affidavit is in Division 11. So I'm appointing the public defender in Division 10 and Division 11. The second arrest affidavit has four charges, and they are attempted burglary of an occupied dwelling, bond uh, 2,500, possession of cocaine, having a bond of 1,000, but I find that that is to be a bond of 150. Count three, possession of cannabis less than 20 grams of first degree misdemeanor has a bond of 100, and possession of drug paraphernalia has a bond of 100. Now, um, from the state's point of view, what is the reason that, the two, that these cases were split into two parts, each one having a large bond rather than having five counts and only one large? Bond. We've noticed law enforcement has been doing that to increase the bond, Your Honor. So no objection to keep treating the 8319 as a subsidiary of 8318. However, we would ask for no contact, no return, no weapons, no firearms, no right. drugs. Returning then to case number 2019 CF 8319, Division 10, I find the appropriate bond in that case is now $150. So the total amount, Mr. Pittman, that you must post to secure your release will be you will have to post a total bond of $3,000, it appears to me. That's the appropriate bond for these five charges, $3,000. But I order that you will not return to within 500 feet of 1823 Americana Boulevard. The, the, uh, Caden Apartments, nor to the parking lot, and you're to have no contact whatsoever with anyone that's named as a, or referred to as a victim or witness or close relative thereof, while the case is pending. And right now, you're being held without bond on the case of 2019 MM4542, and so, does he have the public defender in that prior case? Do we know? Do, do you have? He does. Does he have any priors? No. Okay. All right. Um, the public defender was was appointed in Division Fifty, so you need to uh, have your attorney contact your uh, the judge in that case in Division Fifty to see if that judge is willing to give you new conditions of release in view of the new charges. The next case is uh, Dante Rouse.
Case number 2019 CF 8321. The charge is grand theft, third degree of a motor vehicle from 17417 Cuddell Road. That grand theft of, of a motor vehicle has a bond of $1,000. I've appointed the public defender to represent you in Division 14. You're to have no contact with Tabitha Lynn Pettis as a co-defendant on, on any of these cases. Second arrest affidavit in Division 12 from the same time from the same location just before midnight on the 8th of June. Count one possession of cocaine, bond 1,000. Possession of heroin, 150. Count three is a, a felony possession of, uh, has a bond of 150, and count four misdemeanor. The total bond for, from those cases add up to $1,400. No contact with co-defendant. The public defender represents you on each of those two. That's Division 14 and Division 12. You have two Volusia County matters that, there, that no appointment is made because uh, until you go to Volusia County, uh, that cannot be considered. But you, you're charged with a violation of probation in Volusia County uh, on two different matters here, on two different affidavits. It's actually the same case, Judge. Each officer, there was a transporting officer and they each did one. So okay. So it's it's one violation of probation, but you're being held for Volusia County. Once you bond out from Orange County cases, you will go to you'll be transported to Volusia County within 72 hours of them being notified. Or if you resolve your Orange County cases, you'll be transferred to Volusia County. That's a violation of probation. It indicates here that it was a felony probation. The sentence being for grand theft motor vehicle in Volusia County, August the 15th of 2018 for a period of two years of supervision. So I find that there's jurisdiction to hold you for Volusia County violation of probation. This is David Jr. rushing. Yes, sir. It's a possession of firearm by convicted felon charge that comes from yesterday at Raleigh and South Kirkman. It's a $4,000 bond that is a standard bond for that charge, and I appoint the public defender to represent you in Division 16. You can now bond out but you're ordered not to be in possession of any weapon, including a firearm and or ammunition while the case is pending as a condition of release. Your Honor, on the next case, Mr. Vinson, the defense and I have stipulated to a $1,500 bond as to count one, no return, as to count two, no contact with any victims or witnesses on Mr. Vinson. I'm sorry. This is an arrest affidavit from yesterday for John Edward Vinson. It's from Okoe from Lakeview Street. Count one is possession of a controlled substance. Bond has been agreed between state and defense at $1,500. Count two, Lord and Prowley have been a bond of $250. So your total bond is $1,750 with no return to the location of 2 Lakeview Street. 
which is the McGuire sub subdivision area while this case is pending and to have no contact with anyone that's named or referred to in the narrative. Uh, specifically, Vincenza Curry, and not to be in possession of any substance prohibited by law while the case is pending. You do have the public defender in Division 14. Juan Rodriguez. This is a disorderly conduct city charge from Colonial and, and Orange Boston Trail. That's also known as the intersection of Highway 50 and 441. The charge is disorderly conduct and is based upon um, walking in traffic seeking funds. The public defender is appointed to represent you. The case number is 19MO1134. There may be an offer from the city with regard to this charge. Yes, Your Honor. I can make an offer of either no objection to ROR or a withhold credit for time served. Talk to your attorney about those options. Your Honor, after speaking with my client, he does wish to take the offer and enter a plea of no contest. All right. He is credit for two days, Your Honor. And the off just to make sure I understood, it's it's an adjudication time, sir. A withhold and uh, time served. A Jordan. withhold yes. and time served. All right. What's your full legal name? What's your name? Juan Rodriguez. And your date of birth? 3766. How do you plead to the charge of disorderly conduct? Do you have any questions you want to ask me about this case? No. Okay. No, sir. I accept the plea at this time. I withhold adjudication. It's two days credit for two days served. I order you not to go back to that intersection during the next 179 days. And this is from personal knowledge. In my opinion, this is the most dangerous intersection you can do that in. From my memory, there are countless tragedies of people being run over at that intersection doing that kind of stuff. So for your own good, find some other place, okay? The court costs will go into a civil judgment, all right? No return for 179. Thank we'll be you, out sir. Today. This is Thomas Lee Harris the fourth. Thank you. Wesley Michael Jones. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. 
This is uh, a charge of resisting officer without violence. It is a misdemeanor charge. It has a bond of $1,000 simply because it's, it's alleged that you have no local uh, permanent residence address that you're from the state of Missouri. It's from Bonneville and East Colonial Drive. The public defender is appointed to represent you and there may be an offer from the state to resolve this case. Adjudication three days, Your Honor. So talk to your attorney about what's best for you concerning this case. Your Honor, um, my client does not wish to take the offer today, but I would note that he does have an address in the city of Orlando. He recently moved here. We would be asking to lower his bond. Okay. What is the amount of bond that you can meet? I mean, I'm supposed to start work today at 12 o'clock. I mean, it's my first day, so I'm not even sure if I'm gonna have a job after this. So, like, I don't have nothing. And where do you where do you reside in Orlando? Uh, Avalon Park. Avalon Park uh, apartments. All right. Do you, have a, do you have a job? In, I'm supposed in to the, start today at 12 o'clock. Where? Okay. At Revology Cars. Um, I've, I've reviewed the narrative and <clears throat> based upon uh, the history they, they, of they having bridge. served um, in, in, the, uh, in combat, um, I'm willing to release him on uh, pretrial release as an alternative to bond. No objection to PTR, Your Honor. Um, and I'm sorry? Bond or PTR. Bond or PTR. Yes. Okay. It would be a bond of $500 or pretrial release. Thank you, Your Honor. No objection, Your Honor. I'm just going to explain it to him for a moment. Um, This is Wayne Malir. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan. Hey, education please. Three. No, I'm sorry. Wait. This is Mr. Kelvin. Wayne. This is a charge of criminal mischief. Wayne. Oh, no, no, no. Between uh, over 200, but less than 1,000 for a bond of $500. It's from 2200 Lee Road, Lake Fairview, from yesterday. Lake Fairview Park.
It is for puncturing a tire of someone else's vehicle. The um, defendant in this case has not requested an attorney. Are you planning to hire a private attorney? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to represent the account. All right. It is complicated by the following. It indicates here that he was out on bond on a felony charge, having, bonded, uh, having been released on ROR on case number 2018-CF-17860. AO, represented by Ethan Gooden, Division 14, charges burglary of a structure and criminal mischief. What is the state's position concerning the status of the prior case? May I have one moment, Your Honor? That case has a pretrial conference today. At 1 30. In front of Judge Young. Yes, I would request that the PD's office email their counterpart to let them know that obviously he's in custody. We'd ask the bond be revoked and he'd be held at no bond and go back in front of Judge Young to see if he would like to set a bond. Um, has, it, has the state filed an information on that case? Is that what they're saying? Yes, they filed a burglary. We filed a burglary of a structure, petty theft, second degree misdemeanor, criminal mischief, misdemeanor. All right. I believe that I am to take that action today um, based upon the new charge and the prior charges on case number 2018 CF 17860 division 14 burglary of a structure and criminal mischief I revoked the bond at this time and you are held without bond until you see the judge in division 14 that judge has control of that case and has the file and that judge can either hold you without bond or that judge can set new conditions of release. Um, but until you see that judge, it's no bond. You have a $500 bond on the new charge, as well as the following, no contact with anyone that's named or referred to as a victim or witness, and not to return to Lake Fairview Park 2200 Lee Road while the case is pending on the new charge. He said, he said he would represent himself, but, but he may get a pri pri private attorney. Galen Moran. This is a charge of resisting an officer without violence from Fourth North Forsyth Road in East Colonial Drive. That's in unincorporated Orange County. The charge is resisting without violence with a bond of $500. He was out on bond on the charge of possession of cannabis less than 20 grand. I stand corrected. He was out on bond on a charge of possession of cannabis felony level more than 20 grams. Division 14, 2019 CF 7936. Public defenders appointed to represent him in the new charge of resisting without violence. What is the state's position concerning the new charge and the prior case? Um, we state would request the bond be stayed as is on the new charge and the out on bond charge That was a 6-1 arrest. Um, we asked the bond to be revoked. He be held at no bond. And in the alternative, that the, if your owner's not going to hold him at no bond, to double the original $1,000 bond to $2,000. The state has not made a decision, but it's only because he was arrested, obviously, nine days ago. All right. I believe the following would be appropriate in view of the new charge and the old charge. With regard to case number 2019 CF 7936, possession of cannabis more than 20 grams in division 14. I revoke the bond at this time and a new bond is set. The new bond is set at $2,000. So the amount that you must post uh, the, the total 
will be the, the new case and the old case add up to 2,500. Your Honor, we would, uh, we would ask that no action be taken on that case. Given the facts in the most recent case, the officer making the arrest did not give any commands, according to his own police report, um, until after the, um, the defendant had already began resisting. He placed hands upon uh, the suspect and attempted to bring him towards the ground before giving him any commands. Um, the officer's justification for this is medical reasons, but the charge is resisting an officer without violence. Uh, given the fact that he was grabbed from behind with no commands or in, uh, verbal indications in the police report given to him prior, um, I, uh, there is some questionability ab uh, about that new charge, and as such, we'd ask to take no action on his out on bond um, and to simply set new bonds in his... Uh, or stay his bond in his current case. Um, I, I find that the allegations contained in the narrative of the charging affidavit from yesterday um, are the, those allegations are sufficient to hold um, Mr. Moran on that uh, $500 bond for resisting an officer without violence, and it does affect the prior case. And so I do, I, I do uh, deny the motion to set uh, ROR for lack of probable cause. I find that there was probable cause at first appearances. Um, Mr. Moran can, of course, in that case, file a motion to suppress and have sworn testimony for the judge to evaluate all parties' testimony. Michael C. Turner. This is an arrest affidavit from yesterday from 850 Century Drive, count one, assault on a security officer, bond set at $5,000. Count two, disturbing the peace at a public lodging, bond set at $200. The particular location is listed at Pop Century Resort. There is an arrest affidavit that is separate from those charges, and it has a charge of assault on a, on a security officer. We would ask that be treated as a subsidiary charge, Your Honor. And I, I, I agree that the, all of those cases could have been in one uh, affidavit, and so the appropriate bond on, the, uh, s on case number 2019-MM 4856, that is a bond of $100. Total bond then is 5,000, I, I stand corrected, it's a bond of $200. Total, total bond is $5,400, 5,400 uh, for three different charges. The other conditions of release would be not to return to 850 Century Drive while the cases are pending, not to have any contact with anyone that's named as a, a victim or uh, of which there appears to be three named, anyone that's named as a victim, anyone that's either named or referred to vaguely as a, as a witness no intentional contact with any of those persons, nor contact with the um, arrest, arresting 
deputy deputies. Um, Mr. Turner, on the face of the affidavits, has an address from Illinois. On his um, affidavit, he has indicated he has a residence in Jacksonville, Florida. Yes, sir. And Jacksonville would, would be the most recent address? Yes, sir. All right. Um, what is the state's position uh, as far as if I, if I believe that he li actually lives in Jacksonville, should he have the same opportunity as a local resident for, as far as the amount of bond rather than Illinois being a doubling factor? We'll leave that to court discretion. Okay. I'm, I'm going, I've, I've looked this over and I feel that the appropriate bond should be the standard bond on these cases. So on the assault case, in case number 2019 MM 4856, I, I make that 2,500. The disturbing, the piece is 100. And on the assault, second uh, assault case, that will be a bond of 100. Your total bond now is 2,700. The other uh, requirements of no contact and no return all apply still. Stay in touch with your public defender on these cases. No. This is Kelvin Carl Webb. It's a charge of possession of cannabis, less than 20 grams, is a first degree misdemeanor from yesterday at North Orange Boston Trail and Willow Street. Can we get uh, some headphones? I couldn't hear nothing, sorry. You're, you're being charged with possession of cannabis, less than 20 grams. What is that? Possession of weed. No. Is that Webb? No. Your name? That's all I do. Kelvin? No, that's not me. That's not, not Kevin. I'm Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Kelvin Please. Webb is behavior. All right. Uh, Kelvin Webb will re reset uh, to be seen tomorrow for first appearances. Lazaro Gonzalez. Yes, sir. This indicates uh, that Leon County seeks the return of Lazara Gonzalez. The charge fair to register. Can I, can I say something? Adjourn. I got my register papers right the now. Date, the date comes from May the 20th of 2019 by a judge in Leon County Somebody in, Ta in Tallahassee. You should, you, Man, you, I got my registered papers right here that I did register, signed by the court and everything. Now, here's the thing. Another judge. Unfortunately, um, I, as a, I, as an Orange County case, cannot, uh, I cannot try, try the case when, when the judge that has the file in Tallahassee has ruled that you are to be held on that charge. So all that I can do is advise you of that. I'm, I'm, I'm simply an information conveyor today to tell you that's what's happening. And that judge has ordered no bond to you see that judge. So if there are no local charges and they've already been contacted there to pick you up within 72 hours. 72 hours? Mm -hmm. And they'll Thank take you, you there. The and, I got, and I got the register paper and everything, the date and everything that I did register uh, on and, the sheriff's department. And, 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 and I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not even questioning, I'm not even questioning that. I'm just saying I cannot do anything about it at this point. Or I'm sorry, what county are you? Uh, Leon County. Leon County. You're going to go to, the, you're going to go to whoever signed the warrant. They are the ones to resolve this. We can't do anything here. Show them the paper again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
This is Andrew and Michael Kircher. This is a violation of condition of pretrial release. The paperwork indicates the following. The original charge was grand theft third degree, placed on pretrial release on April the 13th of 2019. And there was an affidavit for violation of that pretrial release indicating that there was a new charge, a petty theft charge, and that violated that. Judge Jennifer Harrison, Division 12, has ordered that you be held without bond till you see the judge assigned to this case. So you're held without bond at the present time in Division 12, and you'll see that judge next. And that judge will decide whether whether you will get new bond what, or, or new conditions of release um, in Division 12. This is Theotis May. Yes, Theotis May. There are three charges, driving while license suspended with two prior convictions, which makes it a felony, from uh, June the 8th, day before yesterday, at Oak Ridge and South Orange Boston Trail. Bond is $2,500. Any condition of release would be that you not drive until your license is reinstated. Count two, felony charge of possession of cocaine. Bond, the appropriate bond is one hundred fifty. Count three possession of heroin. The appropriate bond is one fifty. Total bond twenty eight hundred. And DKB is the division, and that would be number uh, number eleven. Uh, he has not re he has not requested an attorney. I see. Um, I do believe this is a reset due to lack of probable cause, 24 hours was given. Let me take a glance at that. Uh, I agree. It says that the Office of the State Attorney has 24 hours to submit a supplemental arrest affidavit for, uh, let's see, probable cause was found on counts two and three, but no probable cause on count one. So it's an issue of whether whether the state has some, some um, Supplemental uh, for count one, the um, the charge being driving while license suspended, two prior convictions. Uh, don't Your know Honor. exactly what the problem was. It could be Your the Honor, issue of whether there are two priors. Correct, it's the two priors. State did not get information from the officer on the two priors, so state would have no objection to treating count one as an M2. Therefore, it would be a hundred dollar bond as to count one as just a simple first time dwellers. So that being the case, um, the following changes will be made. Count one has a bond of $100. Count two has a bond of $1,000. Count three has a bond of 150. Total bond, 1250. and not to drive until license reinstated.
about Hugo Planilla as next? Yes. You refused. State request that Planilla not get reset again as this is the second time refusing. So what happened to Hugo Panella? Refused, John. All right. Let's see what he's what the charge is. Criminal mischief. All right. Based upon these charges, uh, no further action will be taken, and not to be reset. Uh, Hugo Pania Jr. was out on bond on fel felony level battery in Division 10. Your Honor, on that case in 2018 MM, sorry, it's actually 2019 CF 1170. In that case, There is competency been raised by the state, the public defender's office. However, it has not been found. He has another status hearing on July 24th. We don't have in our system. We have one evaluation. So my understanding is probably they're waiting for a second evaluation. So the court has not found him incompetent, but they're waiting on a second eval in that case. So we'll leave in the court's discretion what your honor wants to do with okay. the Adam bond. Um, I believe that the new charges are sufficient and I will take no action on the prior case. Thank you, Your Honor. That appears to end the first session. And so um, what, what length of time is being requested for, by the state and the defense bet between now and the beginning of the second session? State probably needs uh, 20 minutes. Does PTR require any additional amount of time? I think last time you guys asked for an hour. I asked for 30 minutes to review the docket and talk with these defendants. Okay. Um, it's 5 after 11, so we'll, we'll begin again at uh, um, 1135. Thank you. Motion that we're going to call a second session. Yeah. No, Villa Nueva Torres. Email chain. I printed out because I didn't know that. I'm going to tell you right now. It's been consolidated. You're going to write this down. I'm going to give you a case number. It has been, and you say that, but there's no filing on the unconsolidated portion. I think that's the issue. So here's my understanding of it. It looks like, and it, that's just on the uh, misdemeanor resisting an officer that violence case. Correct. So that has been absorbed. There are two other cases. Well, it, the felony case has the charge now, but the issue is that misdemeanor resisting an officer without violence is still open with no motion in it. So it looks like they just kind of added it on. So my guess is I will ask for tw 24 hours to have the state just do something with it. Right. And that's the, they understand that your intention was to consolidate. No, I mean, it's been consolidated. So it's really, I mean, 
that case is just a matter of I, I don't know how they consolidate it. That ain't my that ain't my wheelhouse. Oh, I don't say that's not my wheelhouse on how they do that. Yeah. What's your what's the misdemeanor case? Do you have it? That's what I'm trying to find right now. No, it's in the motion. 19 mm 1960. My sister is texting 1960. Wait, wait, wait. 1960, and that's what the motion is filed on today. Correct. I'm saying it's been consolidated into 19 CF 3310. Right. So why not just lift the motion? Oh, wait. Let me actually check myself. So this is trusting that you guys didn't do it right. No. Look at that. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Got nothing. Hey, on that last case, same situation as the other guy who doesn't have, who didn't have a request, but I believe we're on the out on bond. Huh? We're not on the out on bond? Yes, you are. You are on the out on bond. Yeah, so we, we represent I say no action on the out on bond. Right. Yeah. And he's got bonds. So if he wants an attorney, he can apply for one. We got 5,000 things happening with me right now. <laughs> Trying to coordinate families and schedules, and so I'm not focused. Kirkland refused on 6 7, and he wasn't on the docket today. I don't know what happened with him, I don't even care. 6 7. We'll, do, we'll deal with that in a moment. I know I just sent the email to the ASA. So I'm probably gonna have it reset again until tomorrow. And I'm gonna ask right now. I'm gonna make a call. Resubmit what? Somebody said it didn't take care of. I don't know what that was. The information? That's probably it. Red.
they already did them. We already had the orders, yeah. Great. I tried to hand them off to give the courtroom one, and they told me no. And I was like, okay. Well, I hope he did okay without it. They said he heard her already. Patty? Ma'am? They said he heard her. They took care of They just didn't take her in courtroom. Is that part? I don't know. Up. They told me she. they did it. I don't know. I, I, I have the orders for 33. They take it to Illinois? They say they did it. They did it? I don't know about that. Let me ask y'all. They did the Spanish? Or are no, we doing the Spanish? No, I'm not just talking about Illinois. The... We've just been doing these rocket dockets for the past. Oh. Is there a way to get to the back through there? <laughs> Guess not. All right, I'm not seeing any advance. Thank you, sir. So you know the Creole interpreter is on standby.
go talk to the attorney. Yeah. So that, that leaves me believe that you feel like you're just above. You're from Creole or Spanish? She got money
And is the interpreter on the line? Mm -hmm. And is the same person doing both Haitian and Spanish? <laughs> You won't be able to do it until some archives come in. Huh? They did? Oh, okay. Look at your mind. This is the afternoon session, the second session, <clears throat> and the interpreter cases. The first interpreter case will be um, Madonna De Dem Demolin. And we had the um, uh, ha uh, Haitian interpreter, Cre Creole interpreter. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. <clears throat> she now she now has the earphones. And I'm Judge Kirkland. I'm reviewing your case this morning. You have been charged with okay. petty theft, first degree misdemeanor from 1700 South Orange Boston Trail in Apopka from yesterday. <clears throat> I am appointing the public defender to represent her at this time on this charge. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There may be an offer to resolve this case today. There is no offer, Your Honor. No offer? No, sir. All right. <clears throat> Are you able to afford a private attorney? I'm not familiar with the, with the process and the system. I don't know. All right. And that is why I've appointed the public defender to represent you. If you or your families uh, d actually hire a private attorney, um, that's that's fine. The public defender will withdraw if that occurs. But out of an, uh, out of an abundance of caution, I'm appointing the public defender to represent you. Um, you can now bond out on a bond of $500, and I order that you not return 
to the location uh, which is of the event that's the subject of the case, the Walmart store. You cannot go there. The Walmart store at 1700 South Orange Blossom Trail in Apopka while this case is pending. That concludes this hearing. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Oh, uh, you would you would want to have the case number for your for your records, and that case number is twenty nineteen MM. Four eight seven two AO. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We'll now go to a Spanish interpreter. Is that all for the Creole interpreter, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. So the Creole interpreter has concluded, and we're now. Is the Spanish interpreter on uh, present? Uh, I'm not sure you're not not with me now. Let me check to see if the All Spanish right. interpreter is ready. I, Give I me a second. Calling in now. Okay, great. Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is Flavia Rodriguez, the certified court interpreter, previously sworn in today. Thank you. Uh, I'm Judge Kirkland. I'm reviewing the case of Christian Melendez Morales. This is a first appearance. He has two cases. One is a warrant arrest affidavit from Division 19. The charges are dealing a stolen property, grand theft, third degree, and violation of the Florida Pawnbroker Act. Those charges come from May the 28th of 2019. The bond has been set at $1,500 on count one, $500 on count two, and $150 on count three for a total of $2,150. <clears throat> It indicates that this may be modified by the first appearance judge. And I do rule at this time that the second count should have a bond of $150 as well, so that the total bond from that warrant arrest affidavit is now $1,800. There is an on view arrest affidavit from yesterday at West Sand Lake Road in South Orange Blossom Trail. Count one, possession of drug paraphernalia, $500 bond. Count two, soliciting without a permit, bond $100, total of $600. So the total bond 
that Mr. Melendez Morales must post to secure his release would be $2,400, $2,400 between the five different charges, three felonies from the warrant and two misdemeanors from the arrest yesterday. The public defenders appointed to represent Mr. Melendez Morales is Division 19 on the warrant and Division A from yesterday's cases. You can now bond out. <clears throat> I need the, uh, to announce the case numbers for the interpreter. The case number for the two misdemeanors from yesterday is 2019 MM 4862. The case number from the warrant with three felony charges in Division 19 is case number 19 CF 8190. We have one more case that will that as a request for a um, Spanish interpreter, and this is State of Florida, it's Luis Elazar Vallejos. It is case number 2019 MM 4853. The charge is domestic violence battery. It is a no bond case. The Public Defender is appointed to represent Mr. Vallejos, and it's in Division A, but it will go to Division 50, the domestic violence case. The question that arises is whether this case should be transferred over to count courtroom two in case there's a witness coming, or, or is this a situation where customarily we, we now hear this case in courtroom one She does wish to be present? Yes, the victim, yes. Okay. Then this case, this case um, will be moved over to courtroom two um, and will be heard. At, at, is it, is it? Yes, at one o'clock. Okay. One o'clock? Yes. Uh, this, this case will be heard at one o'clock. I've appointed the public defender um, in the case, and uh, it is believed that there may be a witness at that time. And, and I believe that that judge has gone to a downtown meeting, so she may not be back by one o'clock anyway. Your Honor, uh, should we wait for the courtroom to call so that we connect for that case, or would you like us to connect at one, just in case? Um, uh, go ahead and connect at, at one o'clock, and I will advise the uh, judicial assistant uh, that that's going to happen. Perfect, Your Honor. Thank we'll you. do so. Thank you. This is uh, Ramjeli Zalagre. Good behavior, Your Honor. Thank you. It's a violation of probation, and he's, he's being held without bond, so it does not affect that. I'll reschedule it for tomorrow. Um, and there's probable cause of holding on a violation of probation, no bond in Division 20, and a violation of probation, no bond in Division 15. Uh, the public defender is appointed to represent him in both matters, but reset the first appearance for tomorrow, the the face-to-face -face portion of the first appearance. This is Christian Allen Campbell. 
Jefferson Campbell. I have three affidavits here. The first is a felony charge of possession of oxycodone, bond $1,500. Count two, misdemeanor charge of possession of drug paraphernalia, total bond $1,600. These charges came from 3.30 this morning at South Orange Watson Trail and Wakulla Way. The public defender is appointed to represent Mr. Campbell in Division 12. $1,600 bond and not to be in possession of any substance prohibited by law. There is also a felony level driving while license revoked as a habitual traffic offender. Bond is $2,500 in Division 20. That's Judge Kest, uh, John Marshall Kest. Uh, it's a $2,500 bond plus uh, condition of not to drive until your license is reinstated. And then the public defender is also appointed in Division 61, failure to appear on a charge of driving while license suspended. In that case, a CAPUS was issued that tells me an information has been filed on the charge of driving while license suspended or revoked, second conviction, so it's a first degree misdemeanor. Your bond has been set by that judge in Division 61 at $500. So you have $1,600 plus $2,500 plus $500. Public defender represents you on all three matters. Three affidavits. State of Florence, Damari Marks. It's an it's an arrest affidavit from earlier th this morning at fourteen thirty five Cardinal Lane in Winter Garden. Count one is a felony charge of possession of hashish, bond one thousand dollars. Count two, loitering or prowling. Bond is $100. Your total bond is $1,100. I appoint the public defender to represent you in Division 10. This case is complicated by the following. At the time of the new charge, you had been released on pretrial release in Division 16 on the charge of possession of burglary tools and attempted burglary of an occupied conveyance. Case number 19, CF 3907. In addition, a pretrial release for petty theft and burglary of a conveyance in Division 20. Case number 19, CF 3909. What is the state's position concerning those two prior um, felony Honor, cases, each of which has two felony charges? Your Honor, I would first oh. note before we go any further, um, we did have a challenge to the probable cause in the second count, loitering and prowling. Um, according to the statute, an officer must give the suspect a chance to avail him of his fears and concerns. In this case, it looks like the officer simply found uh, Mr. Marks, searched him, had him sit down, and then arrested him. At no point in the police report does it mention his, it does mention the suspicions he might have, but he never gave Mr. Marks the opportunity to avail him of those suspicions or to answer questions that might explain the situation. 
No objection RRR is to count two as to 19 CF 3907. That case has a March the 19th arrest. The state has not made a charging decision in that. We'll leave that in the court's discretion. In 19 CF 3909, the state has not made a charging decision in that case. That is also a 329 arrest. All right, I believe that the following should occur in this case based upon all of the factors and, and the discussion. Uh, on count two of the new affidavit, the charge which is listed as lawyer and prowling will be ROR. Um, it is it is an issue that would that would be ultimately considered by uh, sworn testimony as to um, the circumstances and the affidavit is not clear enough to make a ruling on that today other than uh, the state has agreed to an ROR on count two Lord and prowling so the total bond for the new charge is one thousand dollars with regard to the two prior cases I find the following <clears throat> Each one, I am to revoke the release, but you will have new bonds set on these charges. They were pretrial release. The new bond will be as follows. On case number 19 CF 3907, the charge of possession of burglary tools will be a bond of $150. The charge of attempted burglary of an occupied conveyance will be a bond of $1,000. Total then $1,150 for that case. The second case, 19 CF 3909 AO, count one petty theft will be a bond of $100. Count two burglary of conveyance will be a bond of $2,000. Total is $2,100 for that, those cases. So you, you have a bond on each case now, but it is substantially more than what you started out with. You, you have the public defender on each and every case. Your Honor, in 2019 CF 3907, correct me if I'm wrong, but they filed on only the possession, possession of burglary tools. In 3907? We have not made a charging decision. Okay, I'm only showing possession of burglary tools. He was arrested for possession of burglary tools and attempted burglary of occupied conveyance. My mistake, Your Honor. So, so uh, on, I just want to make sure I understand. On both of those two prior cases, is, uh, there's, there has not yet been a, an information filed or a no information filed yet? Correct, Your Honor. All right. Okay, uh, Mr. DeMori, uh, make sure you stay in touch with your attorney on each of these cases because <coughs> they still are um, active cases at the present time. Next case is State of Florida, Sean Amir Gaines. <coughs> this is a capious in case number 2019 CT 465 AE. AE means it's a Winter Park uh, area case. The capious means that an information has been filed in the case, but it's a charge of failure to appear for pretrial the original charge attach in a tag not assigned to the vehicle. The judge in, in that division, that's division 84, ordered a $1,000 bond. Uh, no action is taken on the prior case that holds them on a no bond right now. No action, so <coughs> it is simply you must post a new $1,000 bond on the new case. And, I, and, and you have not requested a public defender. Are you asking for an attorney? Oh, I, I have one other matter. Yes. 
there is a there is a uh, failure to appear on a driving while license suspended charge also and that was a uh, fair to appear for pretrial and the judge set a bond of one thousand dollars in that case so it's the characteristically a first time failure to appear on a case is a two thousand dollar bond in county court and the judge divided them equally between the two types of charges one thousand each for a total of two thousand so you must now post a bond of two thousand dollars Uh, State of Finance, Christina Marie Melton. This is a charge of possession of drug paraphernalia. It's a first degree misdemeanor from yesterday at 2804 South Rio Grande. Your bond's $500. It's a first degree misdemeanor. The public defender is appointed to represent you, and there may be an offer from the state to resolve this case today. Adjudication credit for time served. Okay. You want to take that? May I say something? I used to come to this jail in and out, in and out, in and out. I haven't been here in four years, and I feel so bad what I did, because I'm not homeless no more. And it feels good to be clean, and I don't know why I had a crack stem on me. I don't. And it was so was the stupidest mistake. I've been clean for four years, and I live right across the street from you guys on LB, and I am so happy. You know, we're going to enter a plea of uh, no contest. <laughs> All right. uh, thank you for letting me talk, Your Honor. All right. That's fine. I think everyone in here is interested in you trying to get to the point where we're not seeing you anymore. I am. I'm getting okay. there. And <sighs> Was the public defender appointed to this case, Your Honor? <clears throat> yes. This Division is a real eye open opener. It really is. What, what is your full legal name? Christina Marie Melton. And what's your date of birth? August 13th, 1974. All right. And have you had enough time to think about what's best for you to do today? <laughs> and, and, and you will need to say yes or no so, because there's a tape that picks up your answer. What's your answer? To, did, have you had enough time? You'll need to say yes or no. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to read and sign your plea form? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions you want to ask me about this case? Actually, I do. Um, I don't know if you have read the report or not, but they're telling me that. Uh, well, I think this is something you want, might want to talk to your attorney yes. first.
practical for life for all of that stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. And so, um, how do you plead to the charge it's a possession of drug paraphernalia that's the only charge before me, a, a, a misdemeanor charge, and no and it it does not require you to admit anything in particular. No contest. No contest. No contest. All right. Are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes, I am, sir. I'll accept the plea at this time, and the offer from the state was an adjudication and time served. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. I, um, I at this time adjudicate you guilty of possession of drug paraphernalia. The sentence is two days credit for two days served. You'll be released today. Yes, sir. And it sounds from what you have indicated thus far that you recognize what the situation is and that it's it's almost more of a situation where society is trying to help you stay clean rather than um, try to protect others against the crime that you have committed. Yes. And that's recognizable, and that's why there's such a thing as called drug court and that so on. Nevertheless, I, I am required to adjudicate you guilty of this charge, and you will have court costs that you must pay in the next 350 days. You have almost a year to pay that. And if you're not able to pay that, then it can be converted later on. Can I talk? Um, okay, okay. Yes. All right. I'm fine. And, and Brianna McNeely is not ready yet. Okay, I've got Anthony. Okay, she. Okay, I'll reset for tomorrow. Anthony Oliveras Jr. This is an Osceola warrant. So they'll pick you up. Uh, if you have no Orange County matters, you'll go down to Kissimmee to see a county judge there for a first appearance. They are to pick you up um, within 24 hours of this. It's a violation of probation case. 16MM1220. All right. Thank you, sir. Eric DeJesus? Yes, sir. There was an arrest affidavit earlier this morning at 3501 Millennia Boulevard. It's an Orlando Police Department case, and the charge is a city ordinance violation and it is um, a city version of a trespassing after warning charge. But because it's a city ordinance violation, the maximum sentence is 60 days in Orange County Jail and or $500 fine. If it was charged as, by the state as a state charge, it would be a first degree misdemeanor. The case has the following complications. I do appoint the public defender to represent you in Division A, and the case number is now 19MO1136. 
AO. The complications are that he was out on bond for battery on a law enforcement officer in Division 11 and driving while license suspended. Um, is this a case that can be resolved by the city? Yes, Your Honor, I made an offer of adjudication credit for time served, no return, I'm sorry. After speaking with my client, he does wish to take that offer and enter a plea of no contest. All right. And no objection to taking no action on the prior cases? No, Your Honor. Okay. I release the hold at this time for the two okay. prior cases. Who's not taking any action? Yeah, it seems possible. <laughs> they can take their time. I don't know. I don't care. Thank you. What is your full legal name? Eric Ruben de Jesus. And your date of birth? 0922-1983. There's a city say charge First and foremost to the courtroom, but I appreciate you guys because, uh, boy, I got a lot going on at home, so. For real. Thank you, you need, guys. You need to make sure after this case gets finished that you stay out of trouble until you can resolve those other two matters because they're more serious. It's hard, man, when you ain't got a license, though, man. You got kids and stuff, so. Okay. Um, the case before me today is the city yes, sir. Uh, right. ordinance Understand. violation, which is the equivalent of trespass after warning. How do you plead to that charge? Did you have enough time to, to talk with your attorney about your case? Yes, sir. And did you read and understand your plea form? Yes, sir. Any questions you want to ask me about this charge, the facts of the case, the plea that you're entering, or the proposed sentence? Absolutely not. Um, it's an adjudic I accept your plea. It's an adjudication. One day, credit for one day served. I'll order you not to return to the Wawa station at 3501 Millennia Boulevard. Okay. That no return is during the next 170, 179 days. I probably won't even go back then. You have court costs and you have 350 days from today to pay the court costs. I have no more paperwork, and there are no other persons waiting to see me. And I know somebody has got their mind on something else right now. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. We're in recess until tomorrow. Thank you.